All right, I just got to the tiny house. Let's go ahead and take a little tour. seen that before and it closes nice there you go separates the restroom from the rest of the living space got the sink got a microwave what refrigerator what in the sink nice this place is awesome. All right, gonna get some rest and we're gonna go see what the lemurs are all about in a little bit. Stay tuned. All right, so I will be eating pepper chicken. And uh, yeah, so we'll see how that tastes and I will let you guys know, oh yeah. Good morning, everybody. Yeeha! I slept very well. I didn't sleep with the heater on. Um, I'm used to sleeping when it's cold. I actually sleep better. And uh, yeah, so to this morning, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out and check out the lemurs. I think their feeding time is in the morning and uh, we'll see. And if not, then we'll just, uh, just take a look at the lemurs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let her do most of the talking, um, as in explaining the lifespan of the lemurs and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that she was telling me yesterday that I did not catch on camera. Uh, my battery was low, so I couldn't really do uh, the footage for that. But this morning, let's see how much we can get. Okay. but they do kind of get a little bipolar at a, at a certain age. What is the lifespan? They're about 20 years. And you know, my husband's fixing their food. That's why they're all looking at me like, where is it? <laughs> this, this young lady right here is about 15. No. This young lady right here is about 15. She's our oldest one. And then that's her, her little girl that's about 10. And since he's a baby, he basically gets along with everybody. 
They're, they are uh, native to Madagascar, but these guys were born here in Texas, all of them. You're not allowed to export them across state lines. So you have to buy from a Texas breeder, and you have to. And there's only 26 counties in Texas that allow them as pets. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, Texas allows the county to make its own decision. And these all were pets that went a little crazy on their owners, except for Dennis the Menace. <laughs> we got Dennis the Menace at 10 weeks old. Okay. Because Harriet was having maternal instincts and when I brought him in as a 10 week old she ran over and grabbed him from me and I didn't see him again for several weeks she wouldn't let me handle him she wanted to play she wanted him to be with her but he did get fed <laughs> Like a friend of mine that owns another lemur rescue, she got one that was only three pounds when she got it. Because they had put her in a cage, they didn't feed them. Now these animals right here, like these two, to my knowledge, well I know for a fact, Gizmo right here never went to a vet. And when I got him, he was five years old. Okay. And they now see Dr. T, uh, Dr. T, Dr. Lauren Thielen. At Texas Avian Exotic, I have to give them a little push, you know. Although they tell me they see a lot of lemurs now. <laughs> Come here, Bubba. Come here. Oh, oh. Now, is this the color, the only color they come in, or? The only color that ringtails come in. So there's a there ring. There are, I have friends that have brown lemurs. I have friends that have uh, red ruffs, uh, black and white. They're larger. Uh, a black and white and a red ruff can mate, and you get a tricolor. But they are, like I said, native to Madagascar. With ring tails, there's only about 2,000 left in the wild. These are, like I said, these were bred here in Texas. They were, ring tails breed in captivity very easily. But unfortunately, in Madagascar, people use them as what they call bush meat. They're hunted for, they're hunted to eat. That's why I tell people, Aww. no, it probably wouldn't be better if they were out in the wild. <laughs> they get three square meals a day. Uh, two of them being fresh fruit and vegetables with a little bit of protein being beans and or uh, they like ham um, They also get uh, lemur Zupreme lemur not lemur, but Zupreme primate diet And they get that in the middle of the day which helps with the tartar buildup on their teeth and such if they don't get that then they get real bad tartar buildup and they have to, like in the case of Gizmo, when I finally got him to the vet, they had to pull his comb teeth down here at the bottom. They have comb teeth that they groom each other with. Say, my name's Harriet the Horrible. <laughs> Say, I was the first one they had, and I broke three TVs the first two weeks. That's when we learned to make sure that the TVs were all anchored down good. your heart. He hasn't figured that one out yet. Come on, you want to go say hi? And this is the only one I can grab like this. Because I, uh, uh, no, 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 no. And she gets a little bit irritated when he calls for her. But he's the only one that you can hold like this. No, no. What is he doing? He's trying to need his diaper. Uh -huh. That's why you usually have diaper covers on, but since he doesn't, he wasn't going to have it on too long. He get, he stress poops. Do their nails get clipped? They actually uh, chew off their own nails. Oh. That if they bother them, they'll chew them off. And uh, if the vet has to put them under for anything, she'll trim them for me also. But usually because they're out and they have things like wood and stuff like that to, you know, scratch on. And that's another thing. They have uh, scent glands. Oh. And if they don't have something to rub those scent glands on, if you'll notice we have uh, wood things in here that they can rub on. When I got uh, Gus, Gus Gus, the vet had to drain some of his scent glands because they were blocked. And he's only two years old because he didn't have anything to, 
you know, rub them on and help drain them. Uh, on their fingers? Yeah, that's why we want to make sure. We're, we're looking for some uh, trunks and stuff to put in the ah. habitats so that we can, they can have something to rub them. They've got scent glands up here underneath their... They've got scent glands on their arms. They've got scent glands underneath their arms. And that's how they rub them to secrete. And if they don't get secreted, they get clogged up. Oh, okay. So. All right, it's feeding time for the... We change out. We change it out. Sometimes they have lettuce in there, cantaloupe. We change out the different. Uh, sometimes we have to use can during the winter, but we try our best. Uh, they have kidney beans, green beans, blueberries, which they absolutely adore. Blueberries, bananas, and like Yellow, I said, they uh, grapes. But they will eat all of They each get a big scoop of it. And they will eat it all. Well, they know it's here. They can smell it. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, come on. Now you go to Mama. Come on. Oh, you stop me. Hey, what are you doing? Come on, I got him. Oh, let me get the old girl for you. tell everybody this is a temporary situation for the old girls here. Oh, I finished that one. Yeah, the, yeah, there's a bigger one out on the other side. Yeah, we're working on bigger ones. Now these guys here, these two here are... Chow hounds. Chow hounds. These two girls eat like nothing else. celebrities and this is going to be the new enclosure for there's going to be two of them there okay two of them that are 10 by 20 that'll house two lemurs and they'll have hot boxes in them to help keep them warm and i brought in uh, sandy loam for the bottom come on yeah, let's see if he goes for this one. Piece of a radish. What the heck is that? Oh, no lettuce for me. It's a radish. <laughs> He'll eat lettuce. He's real good about lettuce, and they they like lettuce and green beans and uh, the cucumbers. Okay, you go to Mama. Come on, Daddy's got no shoes on because he couldn't go in. But <laughs> time out. Come here, Bubba. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> All right, so that was the adventure. All right, so I'm gonna take off, and it was awesome meeting the owner and the lemurs. And until next time.